All right, guys and gal gals, uh, DMart95 here, back again with uh, part two of this engine teardown. Uh, this video was, before I, yeah, before I uh, continue on, I'd like to point out this video, I had made a major oversight. I thought the four valve head that's being installed on here was the same height as the head that I was removing, but it's not. So I have to install a longer cam chain. Now, you have an option of uh, breaking the chain and installing additional links. It would avoid uh, me having to split this crankcase apart. This is your crankcase half. This is your right side. This is your left. This is your CVT cover. This is your timing cover. But anyways, uh, it would save you from having to break down the engine. Well... I talked to some guys who actually race these engines, and they say breaking the chain actually makes it weaker, hence the term weak link in a chain. So anyways, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to break the chain. I am going to uh, just split the case apart, which is good for you guys and gals because it allows you to see what's on the inside of these engines. You know. I was once new to these engines and I was real curious about what's inside them, what makes them go, and how do you work on them. And there's just not a lot of information out there. So I'll try to be as informative as possible while I'm doing this. And with no further ado, let's get on with the video. Oh, one more thing I'd like to point out. I have already remove this stator because I was just going to do an 11 pole swap, put the 11 pole on here and then reinstall the other part of the engine. I wasn't going to show you guys this part because I wasn't planning on tearing down this engine. So anyways, there's an 11 pole stator on here. It came with a eight pole originally, but I have to remove this. So that will be coming off. There's a flywheel that normally goes on over there. If you guys need to know how to remove the stator and flywheel, I have a video. Uh, it's called 11 pole video or <laughs> 11 pole stator swap. Anyways, I have a video that shows you completely how to do that. In addition to doing the stator swap itself, you've got uh, wires you got to contend with. You got to install a new regulator rectifier. So, anyways, if you need to know how to uh, remove one of them check out my other videos I got one and we'll be getting to that anyways so anyways with no further undo let's get on to it so I'm gonna start off on this side is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this kickstart gear off or the kickstart lever off it's eight millimeter and then for your CVT cover I got to remove these bolts that one that one that one that one that one, uh, that one down in there, you can't really see it. That one, that one, that one, and that one. And there's one more right here. Got to remove all those bolts. Now, they are not all the same length. So, you're going to want to keep track of where they go. You can do that many different ways. Easiest way, uh, a lot of times when you're changing this, you should have a gasket. Put the bolts in the hole that the gasket, you know, in their corresponding gasket hole. Me, I've got a spare CVT cover down here. This is an old cover. I'm just going to, when I remove a bolt, drop it down in its corresponding spot. So I don't lose track of where they go. So, let's get on with it. Let's tear this engine down, shall we?
Wow, look at that, look how rusty that is. Now I will not be putting that back in, and I wonder why that's like that. Okay, so that's all the bolts. So you remove the Kickstarter. The CVT cover, get your rubber mallet, tap it. Don't tap it too much. And Look at that. What is that? That came out of one of the bolt holes. I have no idea what that is. You never know what you're going to find in these things. Uh oh. It does have oil in there. What the heck is that from? Okay, so here we go. This is your CVT drive. Wow, that sun's pretty bright. This is your clutch. This is your belt. This is your CVT variator. What I'm touching, this is called your drive face. This is your fan. That's how it works. When you go, when you drive, see how these are concaved and they go in on both sides? It squeezes together, causing this belt to ride higher or lower on this. As it does that, that changes the gearing ratio from big to small. And as you know, changing different gears changes how fast you go. And that's really it. You know, it's ingenious design and your clutch inside of it, it's got a spring, your uh, main torque spring it's called, and it determines at what RPMs this clutch engages. It, these really are ingenious setups. This belt, Fazing VS, uh oh. See, you always gotta be prepared for little stuff. What? I had a washer fall off. And I have no idea where it came from. But, you know, I'm not going to edit things like this out. Because these kind of things happen and, you know, anybody that spends time out in the shop understands these things. So, I'm just trying to keep it as informative and as real as possible. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the CVT... I found where that washer went. The washer fell off the kickstand uh, starter thing right there. Anyways, to remove your uh, variator drive face, you're going to use an impact. 17 millimeter. That's what I use is impact. Now, you cannot use impact when you're putting this, this on. Some people do. I do not. Same thing with your clutch. I'm going to remove that with a 17 inch impact. Now, in order to remove it, to make it easy, squeeze your belt down into this channel as much as you can. That way, once you get this drive face off, the belt comes right off. 17 millimeter. And 
and that's it. Comes right off. This is your variator drive plate. Remember what I said, how this is, how that's angled like that? The belt rides up and down, and that's what changes your gearing. Now remove your belt. That's it. Belt size for long case engines, 842-2030. I always go with Gates Power Link, the Kevlar belts. This belt, I wouldn't have very much faith in it at all. It's probably a good idea to remove your gasket now. It did not come off in one piece. They hardly ever do. Any residue? Here, I'll show you. Any residue that's left like this, I advise you to clean off with a razor blade. Don't gouge your metal. Just use a razor blade to scrape it off. There's a few spots, you know. Clean those up. If you don't, it can prevent it from uh, sealing good when you put on your new gasket. A lot of guys, they just reuse their gaskets. Some people have their CVT vented with, you know, cool designs, allow more airflow in there, keep your belt cool. I would never in a million years do that because that allows risk for stuff to get sucked in there. So I think it's an incredibly dumb idea to vent your CVT. And <clears throat> But if you want to do it, more power to you. Anyways... Now we're going to move on to the clutch. That's also something you're going to take off with impact, 17 millimeter. Ah, holy crap. And this is your clutch. This is what's known as your clutch bell housing. As your clutch turns, these pads expand outwards, make contact with the surface of in here. And that's what engages and makes you go. That spring I talked about, I don't know if you can really see it in there. That's your torque spring. The one that my finger is touching. So this is it. This is your clutch right there. Now I'm going to finish removing the rest of the CVT. Oh. I'm trying to put this back together <clears throat> when I opened it these are called pillow blocks these little rubber things this is your boss and this right here is the inside of your CVT these are your ramps now, these are your ramps right here. A lot of times when you see the performance variators, that's what they have. They have longer ramps, allowing more travel. And the other side over here will have a steeper angle on what's, what my thumb's going up and down. These are your roller weights. You can also get sliders for performance. A lot of people change these out. These are 14 gram 
this comes with 14 gram rollers in case you're wondering that's for my buddy Kia Kara that's on it's the ride for him he's currently working on one of these on his scoot so that's the inside of your uh that's what they look like right there that's the inside of the CVT that's what makes the magic happen right there next up I'm gonna remove the starter the wire keeps getting in my way I'm just gonna get just gonna remove it to get it out of my way you do it by taking off these bolts that one and that one two eight millimeter bolts that's all you have to remove to get the starter off Trying not to stand in your way. Talk dirty to it. And that's it. GY6150 starter. This is a nine tooth starter. If you ever need to replace it, nine teeth. Okay, next up, we're going after a very notoriously hard part to remove. Your Kickstarter gear. This one that I'm touching right here. That is pressed on to your crankshaft. You are not getting your crankshaft out unless you get that off. So, we're going to have to remove it. In order to do that, you need some kind of gear puller or some kind of puller. Now, the cheap three-jaw pullers that you see and may have, same thing with the two-jaw, they don't work. The part on this puller that I'm touching, that's down here at the bottom, that's behind this kickstart gear, it's too fat to get behind there. You can't use it. So, you got to find something to get that thing off. Now this is the first time I've used this one. Basically is how they work. You put it on and as you tighten this down it pushes against this crankshaft this way pulling that kickstarter gear off. Now, Like I said I've never used this one. I hope it goes smooth. So here I go. I'm gonna attempt to remove that kickstarter gear. And it did not work. It slipped off there. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to attempt this once more. This time I put some zip ties over there. Don't know that it'll make much of a difference. It might just snap right off again. If anyone ever finds the proper tool for removing this stupid gear, please provide a link. I've got all kinds of gear pullers, but because of the, this one's location, it's very hard to get anything back in there, especially if you're trying to leave the Kickstarter gear on, like, or the Kickstarting mechanism on, like I am. This is your Kickstarter mechanism. I have absolutely no reason to remove it, so I don't even want to touch it if I don't have to. And that's that for this stupid thing. It did not work. So, I am going to have to remove the Kickstarter and try a different gear puller I got. Okay. To remove the Kickstarter gear is what we're going to have to do is start out by taking that bolt off which will allow me to release this spring locking lever from this peg over here. This is the first time I've ever removed one of these so bear with me. I'll have to figure it out as I go. There's your kickstart lever. And 
And there's the gear that engages that pesky starter gear. The reason I called it infamous is because nobody seems to have the right tool for that thing. Here it is all by itself. I gotta get that off. So I'll be right back. I got a different gear puller, another new one that I haven't tried yet. I'll get that on and we'll be right back. All right, so I got the new gear puller on there. This one's much heavier duty. Uh, trying to shine some light on there so you can see. You get your gear puller behind your uh, sprocket. Once you get that hooked up, you hook this up right here and you turn this as this turns. It's the same thing, same process as that other one. All right, so let's give this a shot and see where we're at. Okay. 